So the first stage is you're actually going to need to remove the panels and this is so you can uh, run the cabling from the front handlebars up there down underneath through the bike. To do that we need to start uh, taking apart this, this jigsaw puzzle and uh, you're going to need to start removing some screws. Uh, you're going to need a T25 torque bit uh, um, and you're going to need to remove the side panels which are held uh, um, on there uh, um, and uh, clip on on that side. On the other side here, it's a slightly different arrangement, there is actually a, um, a connector uh, uh, just there and also up there and again that just literally just, just slides off just like that. Uh, um, and just put those bits safely to one side, just be careful when they uh, when you undo those those two top bolts are, um, and you can see the bolt holes just down here and also along there and similarly for uh, uh, this one here and on that particular end there so there are two on each side uh, um, you can see that there is just literally a slide on there and when they do uh, uh, when you take off those two holding bolts uh, they come off quite quickly now what we're going to go and do is we're going to take off the top cover of the uh, uh, tank just there. So to get off this top cover, it's actually really, really easy. Because uh, uh, once you remove those first side panels, there is actually another uh, bolt hole you've got to remove, and that is about there. And that again is another T25. You need to remove that there. And also uh, uh, down there as, as well. Um, don't be forced just to try and lift it off from the, from the bottom because it is kind of slightly clipped in. Uh, you can actually just see the edge of the edge of the tank there. Put your fingers just down there and just gently pull at the plastic uh, uh, and you'll find that that just unclips uh, um, again on the other side as well if that doesn't unclip. If it feels as though it's going to break, stop. Take a step back, figure out where uh, um, it's, uh, it's not right. But hopefully uh, it all goes according to plan. Yep, so that comes off and that's going to go down one side there. And gently uh, uh, put to one side. And there we go. So we've now, now got access to, uh, to the tank. Uh, um, we're going to need to probably find a way uh, uh, of running the cables you can actually see uh, um, that uh, um, if I switch on the light, uh, we're probably going to put it either there, the control panel there, or there, one of the two. I reckon probably about there. That's going to be my 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 bet on that on that one. If you look at the uh, where the wiring loom goes down, it goes down and underneath. You can actually see it disappearing off down beneath the uh, the bike down there. Uh, um, and uh, um, so it's probably a good idea, well, actually, A, it's a good idea probably to uh, to give it a bit of a, a clean underneath underneath here, if you feel that's that's appropriate. But we also are going to need to run all the cables down uh, that, that existing path. Remember, you have to leave enough cable that when you turn your steering to the left or to the right, that the uh, that you're not restricting your steering uh, in any way, shape, or form, because otherwise uh, um, it's going to make uh, living with a bike uh, very uh, difficult indeed. So we need to give plenty of uh, uh, consideration to the running of the cable and trying to integrate it wherever possible into the existing uh, loom structure as well. Uh, uh. So now we're getting to the stage where we need to start removing uh, some more side panels. Our, um, there are a number of screws that do need to be uh, actually removed. And you can see here, I've actually removed uh, uh, a couple of uh, those. Uh, there are screw holes uh, um, approximately there and there, uh, uh, there and there on that side. And also one at the bottom there and one at the back there as well. That just drops this, this, whole, uh, this whole component down here. It gives you a little bit more room. On the 1290 Adventures, there is a, an air filter at the front. It's a very coarse air filter. That also needs, needs to be unscrewed as well. And finally, there are a couple of hidden screws that 
folk uh, always seem to miss, and that's down here, and also it's Rexit number across there as well, and that they also need, need, need to come out. At that point, uh, uh, this component then can begin to come out. It sort of slides forward because it's an air scoop. There is a connector, electrical connector there for the indicator and that is going to need to be removed and you're need to, going to need to do the same on the other side as well. On the top of the tank we're going to need to actually remove some, uh, some connectors as well. So on the left hand side here is a pipe that connects in just around there. And that is for if uh, you happen to get some water on um, the top of the fuel cap and that just drains away to atmosphere. So that's absolutely fine. That literally just, just pulls off. There's, there's no, no connector there at all. On the opposite side, uh, that is a fuel air vapor return. Uh, um, and uh, it currently uh, lives something like that on there. Now you'll notice there is a a, uh, a clip there that will need to be squeezed. You'll need, probably need a pair of a, 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 um, thin nose pliers uh, just to squeeze that and then just gently uh, uh, pull off. There's also a Rexit electrical connector down here as well. Again uh, these are for fairly standard size. If you uh, note just there there is a um, uh, a space a tab and on this side uh, there you can see the white clip at the top there basically just gently push down and gently pull apart so did you know that your KTM tank actually is in two parts well if you look at the actual design uh, a lot of fuel gets stored down the left hand side and a lot of fuel gets stored down the center of it um, it only really joins up in the middle. Um, now to stop fuel starvation, there is actually a crossover pipe that needs to be uh, uh, removed. And uh, um, you, uh, need, you'll find these little sort of silver dimples at the bottom. Uh, um, they may be a bit crusty like mine are, uh, um, but what you do just gently, uh, they may be a bit stiff, but gently uh, uh, switch them to the off position. And then what you need to do uh, is you need to then get a pick uh, uh, to uh, get in behind uh, uh, the actual pipe. Uh, um, again, it's got another one of these uh, these clips just there. Um, you get the pick in behind the pipe there and just gently move it around until it comes off. Now there will be some fuel in there uh, in that pipe. Just have something to catch the fuel as it comes out. So that was a fun old exercise. Uh, uh, you'll now notice the tank is off. So I just wanted to talk you through uh, uh, a couple of uh, gotchas that I found. Uh, first of all, uh, that second connector there, which goes on to, uh, I think, one of the fuel senders uh, um, uh, needed to be unclipped. And that's, that's the first part. The second part underneath the motorcycle is where the main fuel line comes in. Now, uh, uh, it uses one of these uh, special push type fits, just about there. Oh yes, you also need, need to disconnect that as well. Uh, um, and then there is, that is the B end of the connector that goes into the fuel tank. Uh, um, and uh, uh, that's it, there's a button that you push. Now my connector was well and truly gunged up, so I had to give it a quick spray of, of uh, brake cleaner. You can see how dirty it was. It is underneath the, the, the tank immediately behind the wheel, so it gets absolutely covered with grime. So you need to clean it off, and then you need to, it was so, so stiff. Uh, um, you notice there is a rubber O-ring there. Be careful. When you pull down, pull down straight and true, and it will just eventually come off. Uh, um, but it is a super, super tight push fit. Um, so clean that up, that O-ring, before you go and uh, reassemble. At that point, it may be useful to have somebody uh, to help you. Uh, um, the, the, uh, because I have, uh, on this particular motorbike, I've got the uh, crash bars. Um, it does uh, somewhat uh, impinge upon the removal of the tank. 
not in a big way but what you need to do is you need to uh, um, remove uh, um, the tank by gently pulling it up from the bottom oh there was one other thing i forgot to to, to mention there is in fact a flap uh, that goes on the front so let me just get a grab it for you uh, um, and uh, uh, that would normally go down here like that remove that there's two screws left and a right screw and that bit comes off there and you will need to also use that and uh, remove that to actually get get the tank off so the tank basically just lifts off uh, um, using this second person just make sure you're not snagged up i realized that i was snagged up on that connector um, and that basically uh, uh, it was it was a very very tight fit but it eventually went went on remember when you put the motorcycle back on neither need to rest on that rubber mount and that rubber mount down there as well and i think that is the majority of, of things so now we have access to the all the wiring we can probably run the uh Rexit wire down the left hand side of the air box um that's this great big black thing you might want to consider that if you're removing the air box you know uh, um consider taking off uh, uh, all of the bolts and replacing the air box the air filter you're, uh, whilst you're in here it's probably a very good job to do we need to run uh the uh, um uh electronic display probably from about there or from there and we need to run all the cabling down the back of the loom and we need to bring it down and along here probably down the side of this uh, area here now it's quite useful because there are some areas that a there are some existing wiring looms that potentially you could connect into uh, that's not one of them um, that's just a protection but uh, um, there are places that you can at least zip tie cables onto the existing loom as you can see goes to the right of the uh, of the motorbike and where we need to connect into is the battery and the battery lives underneath here that's the display unit uh, um, and i've now unfurled the wires they go on to the uh, negative positive and negative uh, um, the positive has got an inline fuse attached to it and the negative, as I say, uh, is, is like that. Again, just to warn folk, it says do not cut. Tampering would invalidate the warranty from Scott, uh, from Scott Euler. They tend to get uh, 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 a little bit uh, uh, annoyed if you, uh, if you do that and return a cut loom. The battery, if I've just pushed that, is just there. So that's where we need to get, get, get the electrical connections moved into. And from there on in, where are we going to uh, install the RMV? Well, um, the best place is probably, I think, there. That looks like quite a nice nice place to, to actually uh, go and put it on. Uh, um, and uh, um, we can probably just, uh, uh, just do a test fit just to make sure that that, that will work. There are other options as well. Uh, we can put it on, you know, uh, um, potentially on other parts of the frame but that does look like the best place.